And so over to you, Nathaniel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Muted. Hello all. My name is Nathaniel Lewis. I'm Director of Research Reporting, Analysis Data and Systems at the University of Sydney. Um, our group manages the uh, HERDC and ERA submission for the University of Sydney. Uh, among other things, we, uh, we manage all the uh, research information of our researchers, uh, contracts and grants, um, and maintain the information systems that, that hold all that data. Part of the work that we do um, is to look at other technological initiatives such as ORCID and see what sort of value that could add to, um, I guess, the management of research information. Uh, so today we've been asked to talk a little bit about how we've engaged with ORCID, um, what are some of the business drivers, what are the fit to services and some integration challenges and any sort of sectoral issues um, we might want to raise. So for the university um, we've identified ORCID as a, as a good opportunity. Um, it's going to work across uh, the research portfolio, library, our ICT uh, and ANS of course. It's been presented to our senior executive group in uh, the research committee um, and uh, so all the deans and ADRs at the university are well aware of, of ORCID and now it's up to us to think about how do we implement ORCID across Sydney. Um, so we joined ORCID as an institutional member in June uh, this year and so we're now at the planning stage and, and considering what are the, I guess, the, uh, the policy implications for ORCID um, that will lead to some of the implementations as well. Part of those implementation challenges are around integrating it with our internal systems. Uh, we use DSpace as our, as our main repository for um, our ERA and HERSI submissions. We've got a software platform called IRMA, which is our main repository of research information. Um, we also need to integrate with HR and ICT um, going forward if we're looking at identity management. In terms of the alignment to our research strategy, um, we see ORCID as another tool to enhance the data quality, the accuracy and consistency of our information. It allows us to do some triangulation uh, between Scopus and Thompson um, and various funding bodies as well. Uh, and I think one of the biggest challenges we face is around mapping affiliations of researchers. Um, ORCID presents us with an opportunity to enforce persistent identifiers. Um, we've got some researchers with upwards of, um, I think there's one specific example where they've got over 200 identifiers in Scopus. Um, so this gives us an opportunity to, to minimise those different um, uh, researcher IDs and, and bring some automation to that process. Again, managing duplicates across the different systems and mapping those affiliations and publications, grants, data and also help us with our open access compliance so we can report against uh, ORCID implementation. For us, um, it's about maximising the performance of the, of the university in terms of its, um, its research performance um, to help with the reporting, whether it's government, com government compliance reporting um, and also rankings as well. It's about, again, respect to data quality and the accuracy of that data and how well the university is represented. In terms of the fit to services, um, it's going to impact across a few things and this is in relation to the policy, procedures and workflows. We need to think about how it fits within the existing governance arrangements uh, at the university how it's going to be uh, formulated and how we're going to implement that. We are looking at creating an ORCID identifier for all Sydney researchers. Um, so we need to think about how we're going to populate and maintain those records going forward. We see ORCID as supplementing the, uh, the current Scopus and Thompson publication sweeps that we do uh, to fill in the gaps for the under-reporting piece. Um, and we also see ORCID as an opportunity to help manage those non-citation based disciplines that aren't necessarily as well represented in the major publication and indexing houses. In terms of the technical and policy considerations, um, we are looking to see how we can minimise researcher burden. It gets back to that administration um, issue. Um, we don't want to enforce another identifier on them. Um, we want to make it as seamless as possible. It should be happening behind the scenes, so that's a primary uh, issue for us to consider. There are constraints, technical constraints on the ORCID record population policy. We'd like to be able to populate all records in ORCID on behalf of researchers, but there's some issues around ORCID and, and how that can be, uh, can be set out, but that's more around um, the philosophy of ORCID and that the researcher owns the record which is good, but if the researcher owns the record but they don't want to administer the record, how do we go about doing that? So that's something we've got to work through. We do know that the information we collect on behalf of researchers on their research outputs um, is quality assured. We do the checking, the verification, we make sure we've got a record, we've got an actual publication and a file, um, and that's populated into a research information system. So um, 
we want to leave that to make use of ORCID and make it an effective uh, tool to use. There's some questions around the capacity and service levels of, uh, of ORCID, but I think at the, the, uh, the round table we had um, uh, the CEO of ORCID there and, and they reassured everyone they've got plenty of um, resources and they can scale up their servers as well uh, if people do come online in a hurry. We've got, uh, I think, at least 25,000 um, researcher records we need to manage and over 150,000 publications. So we, we need to make sure that if we are populating these awkward records that it can, can cope. There are also some concerns around the privacy and location of service uh, in, the, in the US. Um, advice from our own legal counsel is that it's not such an issue because it's publicly available information but that would be dependent on your local provisions. There will be the usual issues around integrating the existing ICT and HR systems. It's how far do we want to um, use AWKWD and, and integrate it into the systems is the next question. Do we make it something that everybody signs up for when they join the university? How do we go about um, linking the existing AWKWD IDs into their university identifiers? Um, and then how do we implement this at the local faculty level. At the university uh, there are 16 different faculties and they are the ones that run their own show for example. So we need to provide the advice that enables them to perform an implementation of ORCID at a local level and work with them to do so. In terms of uh, the future of ORCID, um, we see it as providing a consistent approach for research outputs and records management. I'd like to see it as a, as a good supporting tool for research and mobility. It saves us having to re-enter all their research information again and again. If they've got an ORCID ID and it's well maintained, that will make um, transferring their research uh, outcomes and outputs um, into and across universities more easy. Uh, we would like to see it as a as a tool for identifying other collaboration opportunities and strategic recruitment, uh, better alignment to Scopus and Thompson databases, um, and in terms of sustainability, uh, I think support from publishers of ORCID is key. Thank you.